Okay, so there are three underlining components of a TDA that we want to review today and then just talk about and think about how we can support um, these pieces of instruction daily uh, throughout other units and other lessons that we're doing, uh, realizing that we don't always have to be teaching a TDA in order to teach skills or to teach students the skills that they need to answer the TDA. Um, so when we look at those three underlying components, um, in order to successfully complete a TDA, you have to have reading comprehension, analysis of that reading, and then of course, essay writing. Um, and now that we have been working with TDAs for the past couple of years, we've been able to notice that our students, um, they have successes in some of these areas, and then they struggle in some of these areas as well. Um, and those are some things that we can keep in mind as we work through here, especially thinking about those things that kids are struggling with. Like, for example, um, when we go to analysis, like students, they can pick out quotes to support things in the text, but are they picking the best quotes, the best evidence to support analysis and to actually explain how that quote uh, supports the statements that they're saying? So we recognize that there are strengths and weaknesses here. So this is all about um, building up that support system for students to help you know, make progress in, in improving in these areas. So let's talk about these underlying components. Close reading. Um, in order for students to comprehend what they're reading um, and then also eventually analyze what they're reading, Close reading is a skill that they have to have. Um, and we, we can teach this, we can support this. And yes, students are going to be at different levels of this. Yes, students are going to have a hard time understanding some of the information that's in front of them. But if we can help teach them some skills to help them get as much as they can out of the text in front of them, um, then that's our goal and that's what we want to do. So um, just to make sure everybody understands close reading, uh, when you are close reading, you read slowly, closely, and carefully. Um, it means we're paying attention to the decisions that the writers are making. Um, I think sometimes just helping students think through this lens is important. Like somebody wrote this piece of literature, somebody wrote this piece of nonfiction text. Um, so why do they write the things that they write? Why are they making certain decisions to set up the writing the way that they set it up? Um, if we can draw students' attention to the fact that, you know, oh, someone wrote this, then sometimes that can help them close read. Text-dependent questions frame the discussion of a text and invite children to co-construct knowledge in the company of a teacher. Um, whenever I was coaching, I saw a lot of classrooms using text-dependent questions. Um, and that's great because those questions are going to help students close read. Um, we'll go over and just look at some examples of what specifically text dependent questions are to help us as we continue. Um, but this is something that we can use to help students close read. Close reading includes going over the text multiple times. This is something that we want to model for students so that when they encounter a text on their own independently, they don't just read through it the first time and stop. Um, so if we think about how we can show them this on a daily basis, you know, looking at a part of a text first before we get into the whole text so that we can discuss some of the things that we see in the reading. Um, reading a text through one time without stopping just to get an idea of what's taking place and then going back in reading, stopping as a class, discussing some of the elements that we see, that's a good way to help go over the text multiple times. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that is planned and students are writing and talking all the time, um, but those things certainly help. But we want to make sure that students are interacting with our texts and encountering the texts um, a few times. This sort of close observation is the foundation of any analysis. Um, we want to help students focus their reading each time they come in contact with the text. 
Um, so if the first time they read, they're just looking for a few details of the plot, that's great. Second time you go back and read, now instead of looking at the plot details, hmm, this character seems to say interesting things throughout the text. So what are they saying and what are the motivations behind what they're saying? And then if the third time they look at the text, they're working with a partner to do something, um, change the focus of the third time they look for that text. Um, that kind of close observation is going to be key. Text dependent analysis requires students to understand and demonstrate close reading. Close reading involves the use of a collection of evidence-based comprehension strategies embedded in teacher-guided discussion planned around repeated readings of a text in order to increase student comprehension. So I wanted to just read this to you. Um, it's a quote that was taken from Jerry Thompson, who you know develops text dependent analysis questions. Her research has really spawned the creation of these um, for the state to use as assessment. But we want to start shifting our thinking um, into just always thinking that text dependent analysis is for assessment. Uh, we have to think about how the fact that students are encountering this on the state exams, how can we fold that into our instruction? Um, and guiding students through various comprehension strategies and multiple readings of a text, that's going to help them gain the skills that they need to tackle these questions. When we're close reading, we have to understand in order to make this successful and actually help students build those skills, there are four non-negotiables that we have to consider. And here's the first one. <clears throat> we have to choose a text that's appropriate. Um, and an appropriate text, whenever we have TDAs in mind, is we have to pick something that is short, complex, and worth multiple readings. Um, and what I find when I go back and look at my own instruction when it comes to TDAs, you know, I thought, oh, I can make a TDA question for any text, whatever we're reading, I can do it. Um, and that's not, that's not true because a TDA has to be worthy of multiple readings to get to a text dependent analysis question eventually or to, to help teach those skills to, um, to further students and their ability to answer a TDA, you have to be working with a text that's complex. If it's not complex, then it's not going to help them develop those skills whenever they tackle something that's difficult. How can they decipher as much information as possible out of it? So that's the first non-negotiable. The second non-negotiable is annotation. Students need practice um, engaging and interacting with the text. They need to read, they need to write in the margins, um, they have to stop in their reading, they have to think about the things that they've read, uh, whether that's independently or whether they talk to a partner about it for a couple minutes. Um, this is something that I've been including a lot more in my instruction over the last couple of years. Um, I'll read a couple paragraphs with students and ask them to stop and a lot of times we, we write about what we read so it gives them time to digest the information that they've read. And then there's a lot more just brief student talking peer to peer in my classroom. Um, when I come across something that's difficult in a text for students to understand, I'll ask them a question about it and I'll say, okay, take about a minute and a half with a partner and see if you can understand why a character did this. Um, and that's been a lot more successful for me in getting students to think a little more deeply about the things that we're reading. Um, and it just gives them a time to, to digest what we're looking at. So annotation is the second non-negotiable. Third non-negotiable, those are those collaborative conversations. So I just kind of talked about two and one, I guess. Um, make sure that you are guiding the conversations at the teach, as the teacher. Like I said, you pose the question, give them a short amount of time to complete it in, um, and then help model the academic language. Um, use academic language as a teacher. If the kids ask questions about it, explain the language that you're using. Um, and always use evidence to defend your thinking as the instructor whenever you are modeling these conversations. And then the fourth non-negotiable, those are text-dependent questions. 
again, we are not looking at the big prompt of the text dependent analysis right now. We're looking at these step by step pieces um, that help students develop the skills to eventually answer that question. Um, text dependent questions, these are something that we can create with every single text that we read. Um, and they focus on various aspects of the text. They look at literally what the text says, they look at how the text works, um, and they look at what the text means. And um, those three elements help to develop a text dependent question. Text dependent questions, this gives you a little more information about those three areas that I just talked about. Um, you can ask questions so that kids get a general understanding understanding of the text and these you can scaffold these you can ask questions that are general understanding first and then get into some more key details of the text and then work for um, other levels of text structure the shades of meaning the word choice the figurative language um, all of those higher level elements you can put those questions last if you wanted to If you are looking to help develop text-dependent questions about what the text says, the kind of questions that you wanna ask help students to inspect the text. They ask a literal level questions, explicitly stated information in the text. So those are like, um, you ask a question, the student can find that answer right there if they just go back and read it. Um, these questions are the launch pad for the beginning discussion of a text. And like I said, if you're scaffolding that, these are the kind of questions that you can ask first. Questions on how the text works focus on the vocabulary, author's craft, and text structure. How the text works require kids to investigate the text. They have to look beyond what is at the surface in order to more closely examine the internal workings of the text. And questions about what the text means focus on author's purpose and interpretation. These are your highest level text dependent questions. When we ask students what the text means, we're asking them to synthesize and interpret the parts of the text while also considering the text as a whole work of literature. And this is complex. But if we're guiding students the whole way through the process and we're having them close read, we're having them annotate, they're having collaborative conversations about the text. Um, this piece, although complex and difficult, becomes a little bit easier. When we create text dependent questions that ask what the text means, we're asking students to integrate knowledge with ideas to locate deeper meanings, and sometimes those meanings are hidden. Um, they're making inferences. They're thinking about the author's purpose. Um, these things take time and they do require scaffolding and they require teacher direction, okay? If you look at this picture closely, um, the first thing that pops out to you could be a variety of things. The first time I looked at this text, what I noticed is just as a bright sunny day because it's the middle of winter and I hate winter. And the first thing I notice is that this day looks beautiful and gorgeous. Um, but as I look more closely at the text, I start to think about some of the details of it a little bit more. Um, like I noticed there's two canoes here. So maybe the person taking this picture is with someone um, and they're just taking a break from canoeing. Uh, I look at the fact that there's like this big log out here um, with some wood beside it. So maybe... I don't know, maybe this used to be part of a pier or a dock. Um, the closer I look at the text, I see that even though it's bright and sunny, there are some clouds that are accumulating here and there. So maybe it won't be bright and sunny for that long. And this is just a sample exercise, but you, you don't have to always look at a text to help students and guide them and think more closely and look more closely for details. So showing an image and finding a better image than this can help you do that, but it's to really encourage students to examine something closely, um, that's an activity that you can do with students to help. So I've been talking about these text-dependent questions. Um, here are some things that we can do. If you look at Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, okay, it's short, it's brief. 
can read it. Um, I'm not